Have you ever heard of Feynman's integration trick? Let's talk about it and see how it works in some examples. As he mentioned, this trick is actually not very well known because it is usually not taught, at least not in the US, in college. But uh, this is a method that has been around for a long time. He didn't invent it. This was known essentially to Leibniz. So it's been known since like the invention of calculus. Here's how it works. Suppose there is some integral i that I want to compute, some definite integral, although the method can be extended to indefinite integrals. But let's do it here for a definite integral. And what I'm going to do is introduce a parameter t. So I'm going to modify f of x so that now is a function of x and a parameter t. And consider the function g of t of that parameter t. This modification of f is done so that uh, there is some value, here I wrote 1, but it can be at 2 or at 3. Uh, g of 1 is the integral that I want to compute, while there is some other value, for example, t equals 0, such that this integral becomes easy and computable. In that case, there is a theorem of Leibniz that says that the derivative of g with respect to t is going to be the integral of the derivative of f with respect to t. And that tells me that if this is something that I can integrate, then I now I can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to integrate g prime. And that's going to tell me that the integral of the derivative is just g1 minus g0 by the fundamental theorem of calculus. And therefore, since g1 was i, what I wanted to compute, then i will be g0 plus that integral that hopefully is easy to compute. So this solution is uh, Feynman's trick. Let's see one very simple example first. So I'm going to compute the integral of 1 plus x squared between 0 and 1. This is a very simple integral, but it's just an example to see how the method works. I'm going to introduce a parameter t right there. So 1 plus x squared becomes 1 plus tx squared. And I'm going to consider the function with respect to t. Notice that at 0, uh, this vanishes. So I just get the integral from 0 to 1 of 1. So that's just 1. And at 1, I get the original integral. So that's just g of 1 is i. Now, what is the derivative? I have to take the derivative inside with respect to t. So I just get x squared here. And that integral is easy. That is x cubed over 3 from 1 to 0. So that's just a third. Therefore, the trick tells me that the value of the integral will be 1 g of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 third of g prime t dt. That is also easy to do. That's just 1 plus a third. So that's 4 thirds which is the value of that integral. Now let's do a more sophisticated example. I want to compute the integral of x squared minus 1 over log of x, which would be very difficult by traditional methods. So I'm going to introduce a parameter. And now I'm going to put the parameter, instead of that 2, put a t here so that at 0, at 0, x to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So all is 0. And at 2, I get the original integral. So now what is the derivative? Now the derivative of x to the t with respect to t is x to the t times the log of x, which will cancel this log of x. So the derivative of this with respect to t is just x to the t, which is easy to uh, integrate because x to the t dx, now t is a constant with respect to x. So this is x to the t plus 1 divided by t plus 1. So the value is 1 over t plus 1. So now I have to find the integral of g prime of t from 0 to 2. So let's do that. That is just log of t plus 1, which when evaluated, I just get log of 3. So the integral, so the value of uh, the integral that I wanted will be g of 0, uh, which is 0, plus the value of this integral log of 3. So the value of the integral is just log of 3. 